Okay. Uh, hey folks, welcome back to another part of my thing. My thing where I'm making a Tetris data extractor. A uh, bunch of stuff happened in this last uh, week. Um, I got rid of Windows for the umpteenth time and put Linux on my computer. Um, I like using Linux a lot more, but... You know, every every few months I decide I want to use the other operating system for whatever reason. And this time I ditched Windows and put Linux back on. Um, anyway, that brought some... a bit of difficult difficulties getting uh, .NET Code to run. I had to install Visual Studio Code and get it all working with uh, .NET Code. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, the environment is a little different, the IDE is a little different, the program that, um, but the code is the same, and so we're going to keep on, we're going to continue on from where we left off. Uh, the other fantastic news is I got my personal best in Tetris yesterday. Almost, I got 395,080. I'm almost broken 400,000, which is very exciting. So, anyway, uh, let's... <clears throat> try and remember what we were doing last time because it's been a while um we've reduced the digits to a bounding box where there's no blank pixels around the digit um and now we're trying to compare it to canonical images so that's what we're doing and i had a i was i was pretty stumped last time i couldn't quite uh figure out the algorithm and I went away I walked away and I figured you know what maybe it'll just come to me so I was thinking about it some more and I tried some pen and paper tactics and it, it, it turns out that I think this is this could be elegant the, an elegant solution does exist somewhere and maybe we'll find it, but for now we're going to break this into cases. Actually, I had a notebook, and now I don't. Where did it go? Must be downstairs. Um, but the way I see it, there are four cases. Uh, case one, when the same image is wider and taller than the other one. Case two is when... Uh, one image is wider and the other image is taller. That's the difficult case. The third case is they're both the same width, but one of them's a little taller. And the fourth case is they're both the same height, but one of them's a little narrower. Uh, so that is the four cases, which we're just going to take in turn. And then afterwards, if some brilliantly elegant way of combining them uh sticks out at us then we'll we'll do that but for now we're we're, we're not going to worry about it uh so this is visual studio code not visual studio anymore and i've got this running and working and hopefully uh hopefully everything goes well uh, okay so we're working on uh, digit reader 2 and we did all of this stuff so the main method here is get digit, and we're going to get the probabilities list of the image. First, we reduce the image, and then we pass it off into the probability generator, which for each of the digits 0 to 9, we're going to come up with a metric for how likely our given image is that digit. And we're just going to take the one that's most likely to be uh so probability equals get probability for the reduced image and i and this is this is where the heart of the matter the heart of the algorithm lies uh so we give it a reduced image and an integer we get the canonical image and that's remember that's the set of images over here that we've um we've uh, generated and it just looks like that some of them are red some of them are white that's okay uh, okay and then we get the probability for that reduced image in that canonical image now i did a, some 
some funky stuff here. What we're going to do today is get rid of this all. This is a probability. This is the algorithm. Whoops. Come on. Here. Here's the algorithm for determining the probability that at this position um, these two images are most likely to be. So there, we want to like move these around so that we can get the best overlap. Um, and so I'm going to pull this out. Let's just comment all this out. <laughs> I love commenting out things. Okay, we're going to start over with this method. And first we're going to, we have an image one and we have an image two. We don't care which one is the canonical image. I wonder if I can... How's that? That's probably better. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one is the canonical image and which one is the one that we just did, um, that we're checking. Uh, we're gonna figure it out. So, uh, case one is, one of them is bigger and wider than the other one, or taller and wider. So, if, um, image one width is greater than image two width and image one height is greater than image two height Um, we want to do this. Or, now we're going to have to check the image to image two dot width is greater than image one dot width. And image two dot height is greater than image one dot height. Okay, so this will check one of them is completely encased in the other. If this is the case, eesh. bring that back there. So if this is the case, Um, and then we're going to um, we're going to say get probability. Oh yeah, we're just returning a decimal. So return get prob probability. one image taller and wider and we'll say we'll give it the taller one so image ah you know what yeah we can have a few other cases so okay let's try this if the image one is wider and taller, then we're going to call it like this. And the reason I'm doing that is because once I get into this method, I want to be able to know which one is the bigger one. So 
does this help me generate method look at that and we're going to say larger and this one will be smaller okay that's good um, else if image 2 dot width is greater than image 1 dot width and image 2 dot height is greater than image 1 dot height now I don't know how often this is this is going to be the case but this time it's image 2 that's taller Okay, oops, I forgot my semicolon. Awesome. Um, so that takes care of the first case, right? And now we're going to check the cases where one is, is, is shorter, but the other one is taller. So this is going to be, um, let's say, if image one is bigger than image two or wider, and image one, we'll say image, uh, let's say image one dot height is less than image two dot height. Okay, then we are going to call a different method. And this is other wider. And we're going to call this with the taller image first. So let's make sure to determine that. The, the taller image will come first. Taller and the other one is wider. So that's going to be a funky case, this method. I really, I really think so. Um, Else if image one dot width now is less than image two dot width and image one dot height is bigger than image two dot height. This is very, very verbose and I don't like it, but Get probability one image taller. This time it's image one. That's taller. Um, yeah, that's right. Okay, so that's that's fine. Uh, image one is the taller one. Image two is the wider one. So that's our second case. Uh, the third case is when. Uh, they're both the same width, but one of them is taller. Okay, so let's image one dot width equals image two dot width, and image one dot height is greater than. Excuse me, image two dot height. So in this case, we're going to get the probability. Um, same width. That's all we're doing. And we're going to say the taller one will be the first one passed in. Okay. And again, we will make sure to do this. And this will be shorter. Okay, so we're getting there. We're defining our cases. Lots of cases. Oh, okay. Image 1 dot width is equal to image 2 dot width. And image 1 dot height this time is less than image 2 dot height. Uh, same width. Image 2 is the taller one now. So that's fine. 
Uh, okay, so that's our third case when they're both the same width. One of them's taller. Our fourth case, image one dot height equals image two dot height. And I think for this, I'm going to copy and paste. And I've just got to make sure this time we're looking for equality in the height and an inequality in the width. Uh, and this time we'll be calling it the same height, but the width is bigger. So we will. And one of the things we could do is just rotate these instead of deal with left uh, widths and heights, but same height, bitmap, wider, and narrow. Were. I don't know. Whatever. So this would be the same height. Uh, okay, the heights need to be equality. This time image one width is less than image two width. Uh -huh. Okay, same I, copying pasting is very, very scary. Very easily introduces bugs. Uh, there's actually one more case I didn't think of. Else, uh, we're gonna we're gonna put this into an else if image one dot height equals image two dot height and image one dot width equals image two dot width. So in this case they're both exactly the same width and height. Get probability. This method is called get probability. We're just gonna call it the same size. Image one, image two. Ugh, that's very verbose. Okay, that's all right. Um, so now I've got all these. I've got these five methods that have to be written. Um, but I do have an algorithm here, which I want to take and I want to uh, name it properly. So same size, same height, one taller, one taller and wider. Okay. Public decimal. Uh, what do I need here? I need Because in this case, I'm going to give it two images, and the two images are going to define an area, a space. Uh, Image one, bitmap, image two. Okay, now I want an X offset and an int Y offset. And this is going to be the magic. This is where the magic will happen uh, in these offsets. <sighs> because I'm going to offset the one from the other. 
Um, and it doesn't matter which one I offset. It does matter which one I offset. Um, because I don't want to move two images outside the bounds if I don't have to. So the, the wider one will have the offset and the taller one will have the offset. Anyway, let's let's copy my code just to see what I'm after here. Whoops, I think I may have copied this a hundred times. I'm not sure. Let's uncomment this and deal with the squiggles. Um, yeah, so this X offset. I think we're going to make this extremely verbose. Image one int image one offset. Oh, and I can make this a size, right? Right? Whoops, no, no, not a size. Yeah, size has a a width and a height aspect to it. So width and height just encapsulates. So image one offset, a bitmap two and a size image two offset. Okay. That's good. Okay, so the leftmost x value is going to be zero. It always is zero. We are going all the way up to we need the the end bounds. So let's um, let's say the full width equals that's not really true. I could say image one dot look I could say max come on math dot max of the the maximum of the widths okay bar full height equals maximum of the heights that's fine and then I can say okay so because wherever yeah we're gonna start at zero and we're gonna go all the way up to full width I'm going to start y at zero and go all the way up to full height. <clears throat> now, my earlier algorithm was just a frozen, you know, check that same x, y value for both images. But this time I'm not doing that, right? I need to check the image, but I need to do an offset. So if the if the if the image one is offset, what that means is we're going to uh, 
and I might not need a second offset here. Whoops. No, I will need a second offset because I want to. What I want to do is, in, first time is going to be zero zero. They're both going to check their zero zero pixel. The second time, I'm going to be moving something over to the right. So the image one might move to the right, and there, therefore it has an image, it has an offset in the width. So I'm going to go x plus image one offset dot width. And it will also have an offset image one offset height. Okay. And this might have an offset too. Uh, yeah, this will have an offset as well. And a y plus image two offset width. Okay. We need to take our, uh, where are we here? Got a couple of constants here. Let's just remove them from there. Throw them here. Okay. So a matched value and an unmatched value. If only exactly one of them has a pixel, they're unmatched. If they both have a pixel, then calculate whether that pixel is black or not. Okay, then once we do that, and here we're going to have to get the pixel at the image one offset width. Offset height. Come on. Image two offset width. Something about this doesn't feel right, but hopefully it will become apparent to us. So that's how you get the probability for a scenario. Done. Okay, um, that's fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of these. This is my this is my tester thing. Return, return, return. Okay, what we'll do is we'll say else. Um, throw an exception. Can't calculate probability. Should never hit there, but whatever. Yikes, that looks like a lot of stuff. Okay, let's get to writing some of these things. And we'll tweak the probability kernel as, as needed. Let's kill this. Uh, okay, so uh, does this shortcut work? No. No. There should be a collapse. Oh, okay. So let's do this. If they're the same size, we are going to return get probability for image one new size, image two new size. And I'm assuming if I just knew up a new size. Um,
Oh, you know what? Uh, let's yeah, let's use the static empty. The empty size, because we really don't care. Okay. Perfect, and that's it. That's that is. Uh, that is when they're the same size. So now we're going to deal with the same height. One of them's wider, one of them's narrower. So we're going to say we're going to move the narrower one within the wider one. So for int, uh, let's go width difference equals wider dot width minus wider dot uh, narrower narrower dot width okay uh, uh, because that okay now for int i equals zero i is less than or equal to the width difference. We'll increase that. So we're going to slide this narrower one along. Um, what's happening? There we go. That's weird. Okay. Again, we're going to do the same thing. Um, what is going on? Our probability equals zero M. Something's wrong with Visual Studio Code. Okay. Um, no. Probabilities equals new list. It's a new list where we're calculating the probability for each movement. So probabilities dot add and this is the same height so now we're going to say um, get probability here we go uh, wider The offset will belong to the wider one. New size i zero because i is the number of pixels we've we've shifted uh, and narrower, and that's just empty. That's an empty size. Okay. really don't like the way that looks okay so we've done that and now at the end we'll just return probabilities dot max we we'll just find the maximum one send it on its way okay that's for the same height and you can appreciate we're gonna copy and paste for the same width and just change some names pretty much. So this becomes taller height, shorter height. Um, 
we'll rename this to height difference. This will be taller. And this time the offset is on the Y. And then the shorter is size empty. That should do it for us there. That's the same thing. Okay, so now that's the same width. One image taller and the other wider. That's the one I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip this one. We're going to do it at the very end because it's the one I'm most afraid of. Because <laughs> that is a difficult thing to figure out. Uh, for here, we're going to get probability one image taller and wider. So this is the case where one is completely larger in every respect than the other one. So, uh, what did I just turn on? Okay. Okay, so in this case, we're not we don't need to find the maximum. Uh actually we do wait a second. This is gonna be like these other two that we've done just put together. So the height difference equals the larger dot height minus the smaller height and the width difference equals the larger's width minus larger uh, smaller width. Okay, and then we will have another seriously the tab button tabs through the windows when I'm in the text editor. Are you for real? I gotta figure that out. Probabilities equals new list decimal. Okay, and then um, we're gonna, you know, let's let's turn this into x equals zero x is less than or equal to the width difference. Um, and the only difference is now we're going to be doing two loops instead of. Oh. Okay, I gotta figure that out. Like seriously. Are you serious? <sighs> Good. Okay. Man, that is so annoying. Okay. And y equals zero. Y is less than or equal to height difference y plus plus okay now we're going to add we're going to get the probability and this time it's going to be the larger with a new size of x y and the smaller and an empty size Okay, so that's good. We've done that, and now we will return probabilities.max. No difficulty there. Awesome. Well, I think that's good enough for today. We weren't able to test anything, uh, and I think that's okay. Um, I'm on vacation this week, so I'm hoping to come back tomorrow and continue on this. But I've got to go right now. So thanks for joining me in this. I think it's part seven. Um, I think we're getting there. And hopefully we can do some really cool things with it one day. Okay. Uh, have a good day, and we'll see you next time.